This is Music Row. It may not look like much, but these streets are fueling this. A $7 billion a year tourism industry, where bars can gross over a million dollars a month. And a dream factory, where anybody can write a song that might just lead to global stardom. This is Nashville, a city built on country music. A hit country song was going to pay about a million to a million two. Where some of the shrewdest players never even touch an instrument. This is like a nightclub in a vehicle. From top country stars to bootstrap entrepreneurs, I'm here to pull back the curtain to see how people are pursuing their dreams, making money in the music business and off the music business. Nashville, show me the money. Look closely. Every street in this country is powered by a dream. I'm Marcus Slimonis. I'm a CEO, I'm self-made, and I'm a champion of entrepreneurs. I'm gonna meet the hardworking women and men whose passion, drive, and determination fuels the business of America's most iconic streets. This is Streets of Dreams. Welcome to Nashville, the house that country music built. From barroom stages to 85,000 seat stadiums, the sounds produced here travel far and wide across the globe, earning billions. They say a great country song is just three chords in the truth. And as a lifelong fan of country music, I have to agree. But I'm here to look at the business side of the industry. And to do that, I'm going to need some help. What's up, dude? What's happening, Mark? <laughs> I'm Mark. I'm Troy. Good to meet you, Nice dude. to meet you. You ready for a hillbilly ride in a country truck? Yeah. All right. <laughs> How did you end up in Nashville? Are you from here? I'm from here. Lived in a farm just outside the city, and then uh, we have a home down here in town, too. Troy Tomlinson is the most powerful country music publisher in the world. He's handled the songwriting careers of countless stars, including Kenny Chesney, Blake Shelton, and Taylor Swift, who he's worked with since she was 14. And how'd you get in the music business? So I was the tape copy boy. The sales guys would decide which songs we were going to pitch to what artist, but you had to put them on a cassette and put a lyric sheet on them. And I was doing the grunt work of that. But you learned? I learned the catalog. I learned the songs. And songs are everything in this town. The neighborhood of streets we're driving through is known as Music Row. And as unassuming as it looks, it's the hotbed of a multi-billion dollar industry. All these little houses that you see, yep. when I first got in the business, that's all there were. And in the evenings when I was young, I'd come down through here and I'd see guys sitting down on the front porch with the guitars, and I'd pull over and go up and have a beer with them and listen to their songs. What time in the morning was it again? Yeah, uh, that was going to be the afternoon, yeah, late yeah, afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Music Row got its start in 1954 when brothers Owen and Harold Bradley converted a World War II shed into one of Nashville's first recording studios. And they recorded some of the biggest artists in music history. From Patsy Cline and Johnny Cash to George Jones and Tammy Wynette. Soon record labels and competing studios and an entire industry sprang up around it. If I came an intern for you and you gave me an assignment, mm -hmm. what would I be looking for in terms of content versus matching up the artists. First of all, we'd never call it content because it sounds cold and... Corporate. And yeah, so okay. it's, it's music, right? Okay. So song. So what would you lyrics. look for? Lyrics. Lyrics and melody. When a song earns money, it's paid out in two equal shares, writing and publishing. So imagine a new songwriter rolls into town. A publishing company will offer her a monthly check in exchange for a 50% stake in publishing rights. The publisher will then shop her songs to other, more established artists to record. As our songwriter becomes more successful, a major label might just take a chance on developing her recording career. And pay for recording time in a studio like this, where stars from Vince Gill to Casey Musgraves to Miley Cyrus have laid down tracks. So the control room is what we call this because it has the control board. Right. Great speakers, killer speakers, inherently important. So 
in, in this studio, right, this is obviously where the music gets made. I'm trying to figure out where the money gets made. Yeah, there, there really isn't an easy way to answer it, except as it relates to a hit song. A hit country song that you hear on the radio all the time, and it goes to number one. The writing portion of that song is going to pay about five or six hundred thousand dollars to the writer, and the publisher share of it's going to pay exactly the same. So five or six hundred grand. So you got a million to a million two that's going to come in to the writers and publishers okay. of the song itself. Um, you know, most people are surprised to know that country music is my thing. It made my life smoother and better. And so I want to understand the business of it all, mm -hmm. but I also wanted to understand the magic of it all. Music changes people's lives. It heals. I get letters from people. They're asking me to pass the letter along to the songwriter to tell them what it did in their life. The need for the song to move people. We're as desperate for that. I'm as desperate to get music that will move people as I've ever been. If I was an artist, and I felt like I had all the goods, the lyrics, the music. A guy like Troy is somebody I'd want to be connected with. He knows a hit when he, when he hears it, and he also has the avenues to get me exposed to other people. The road to country stardom lures countless musicians to Nashville, but only a tiny fraction of them will have the right mix of talent, passion, and luck to succeed. I'm here to see a young woman who is fighting for her shot. Yo, please. Make a massive welcome for Savannah Kais. How is everybody doing? Okay, like he said, my name is Savannah Kais. I'm just turned 22, and I moved here five years ago. I moved here when I was 16 years old. Can you believe that, that my parents let me move here that young? They've done everything in the world to help me reach this dream of mine. That's better. Savannah Kais came so close to stardom, she could almost touch it. When she was 13, a YouTube video led her to an appearance on The Ellen Show, where she landed a recording contract with a top country label. And then it all slipped away. Nine years later, she's doing odd jobs to stay afloat and writing new songs in the hopes of a breakthrough. Hey, man. Hey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are, are you? you? I'm Marcus. Nice to I'm a hugger. I'm it's Savannah. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's up? I'm Blair. Blair, how are you? Nice Doing to well. meet nice you. Nice to meet you. This couch is big for just one person. <laughs> Songwriting is an intimate process, and normally it's not something you'd ever see. But I've been lucky enough to be invited to a session with Savannah and Blair Daly, an industry veteran who's written five number one songs and recorded with artists like Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson, and Trisha Yearwood. How long have you guys known each other? Almost 10 years. I met him when I was 13 years old. 10 years later, we we're probably on song number 46 or something yeah. like that. So of the 46 songs you guys have done together, have you put any of them out in them? I haven't. What's prevented you from actually getting your songs heard? Just a chance. It's kind of where, like, opportunity meets the right song at the right time in the right room and that right person hears it. And I think that that's where a lot of people end up going home. Because if you have a plan B, you should probably go do that plan B. What's your plan B? I don't have one. Like plan A, B, C, all the way to Z is music. I want to challenge you on you, you don't have a plan B. Your plan B is I have to make a living to live. Those side jobs are only funding my plan A. I don't want to do anything else. Like. Sometimes when I write these songs, I have to get it out of my system because I'm feeling it so much right now. So can we actually try to write one? Absolutely. Did you have some thoughts before I even got here? I did. I was really excited about it. So I have this title called Superman. My biological father left when I was six months old. And my mom fell in love with this man who's been like, my dad since I was three or four years old. Yeah, he might just be this guy in a baseball cap, but for me, he's Superman. Let me hear the melody. <laughs> OK, um, something like, da -da -da -da. I'm gonna tell you right now, your voice is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really, I'm really, now I'm frustrated that there's 46 songs and nobody's hearing them. But it's time. I think oh. so too. Amen. Let's, Amen. Let's make this the one. Let's get, I don't know how this process works, but I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs>